G'day guys, thanks for joining us on the New Spirit Podcast today. You're joining Turbo and I in studio, along with our partner, spearfishing.com.au, who have helped us bring this show to you today. Now you can use the code Noob Spirit checkout at spearfishing.com.au to save $20 on all purchases over $200. That goes along with competitive shipping rates worldwide and a 90-day no-hassles returns policy. You can also visit Adreno in their physical stores in Melbourne, Sydney or Brisbane and just check out a huge range of spearfishing equipment. So shop with our sponsor, spearfishing.com.au and support the Noob Spiro podcast. G'day Noobers, welcome to today's Noob Spiro podcast. It's great to have you along with us. Today we're headed over to Greece to interview Vasily Koronios. He's a man that's made a name for himself uh, filming and editing some phenomenal spearfishing films on YouTube. He's got a channel uh, that's called after his own name, Victor, uh, V. Koronios. But uh, his entry this year, uh, My Blue Mind, came second in the Deepex Il Pescatore in Apnea competition this year. And he actually came second to Sideris, the guy that won the Spearfishing World Champs over there in Greece this year. So he's uh, b- big raps on his editing, so get along and um, check out his videos as well when you get a chance. But we hear some awesome stories today, learn a bit about um, sort of his, his mindset around sustainability. And we also hear a phenomenal story about a, a real battle of the wills for chasing down this amberjack and he had several opportunities to hunt this fish and uh and we'll we'll get to the story eventually uh and other news 99 tips to get better at spearfishing our book on amazon has been going phenomenally um it's been it's been bought in like more than 10 countries now and uh it's going really it's performing really well we're happy with our efforts uh, it took a long time to put together so it's good to see that sort of um going well on there and i really just wanted to reach out to you guys and say thanks for buying our book and uh leaving us reviews as well it's it's going really well um dave nickel over there in spain he reached out he's just subscribed to the newsletter over on noob spiro he loves the blog he's um got a lot out of some of our sort of guides and posts up there at noobspiro.com so thanks for reaching out dave really appreciate that it's great to hear that some of the hard work we've done is making an impact on people spearfishing so Good stuff, hope you're shooting heaps of fish, buddy. Right, without further ado, let's get into today's Noob Spiro podcast interview with Vasily Koronios. I wanted to share awesome experiences that you can have when you are in the water, and that's why I started spearfishing. I just clamped down on the reel and got drugged down to about 50 feet, and I'd never had a battle like that before in my life. So when you're learning where to hunt and find fish, they're the hotspots, it's where fish want to be. Don't overcomplicate your gear, don't go diving dressed up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> I actually started off in stubbies with a bloody belt with a pig knife on it. And I've seen this big fin break the surface, roll into the water, look down, here's this nice, Great one. Oh. Once your face hits the water and you feel relaxed and all the other stresses of life seem to disappear. It's a whole new world and it's mysterious, it's magical. Beats the shit out of knitting anyway. Oh yeah. Mate, great to have you on the show, Vasily. Mate, we'll get straight into it. Where did you start spearfishing, mate? Uh, I started uh, spearfishing in in the island where I'm descended from. It's Kithira. It's in the south of Greece. And I uh, have been spearfishing for almost 30 years now. So a lot of a lot of experience over there, mate. Tell us about the kind of diving that you you do. It was it K- Kifiros? Yes, Kithira. It's it's the Kithira. island uh, where in the history in ancient history Venus was born. Ah, wow. Here we go. A history lesson as well. It's pretty good. All this right. So, a good uh, interview already. Mate, what sort, of, uh, what sort of water depth are we looking at and, uh, and, and clarity and what kind of fish do you hunt uh, yes. in Kithra? Kithra is uh, an island with very deep waters and uh, the clarity of the waters is uh, 30, 40 meters wow. in good weather. The wow. sort of fish are... The, all uh, the Mediterranean fish, groupers, brims, amberjacks, dentex, all these. Which is your favorite uh, one of these species to hunt? My favorite fish for the power is amberjack. But uh, my favorite, favorite fish for its uh, behavior in the waters, in uh, the deep, is, uh, uh, is a grouper, is the, the white grouper. So what, what, makes, what, what makes them so fun to hunt? Are they a... 
more more sort of wary fish? Are they more difficult to shoot? They are uh, they're clever. They adapt. They adapt. They adapt after, over the years, and it's very difficult to hunt them. They know what you do, and they do different things. Okay, so a fish a fish with a bit of character and a bit of brains. Yes. Now, I see you sent me a little bit of a list early. Uh, there's four species of grouper that you hunt. Uh, is that a common one, the white grouper? The white grouper is common in Greece, yes. Okay, so on an average spearfishing trip, how often do you come across grouper, or the, particularly the white grouper? Uh, in the, I have a summer house near the Canal of Corinth, and uh, this is uh, the, the deep is all, almost uh, everywhere sand. And uh, th- these fish are usually on sand. So at my summer house, I usually hunt uh, white groupers. In other other places, as as uh, Kithira or Sa- Santorini uh, or uh, the Corinthian Coast Gulf, there are uh, mostly uh, uh, all the fish. Okay, so is there quite a bit of vari- variability between some of the different places in Greece and some of the islands that you can dive? Yes. Generally, all the fishes are uh, on all places, but uh, it depends from the the of the of the the bottom of the sea if it's sand or rocky some fish are more in quantities it depends from the from the bottom of the sea if it's sand or rock or something else okay and recently the world champs were held over there uh how far away from you were the world championships um held the the world championship was in Syros. Syros is uh, uh, near Sandorini, where I'm going in the summer. The in Syros they were hunting at 60 meters. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, too 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 deep for for a human being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was watching some highlights on a video last night, and I was thinking, wow, that's uh, there was some some really uh, elite. Divers there, some yes, guys. They are they are really world champions, all of them, not only the first. So for you, uh, it was a Greek that took out who who won the the spearfishing champs too, Sidiris. Yes, yes. Wow. Okay, so h- how how deep are you diving uh, for a lot of these places you've mentioned? Uh, the Cor, uh, how do we say Cor- Corinthiakos Golf? Is it? Yes, Corinthiakos Golf is uh, near, near my summer house. Uh, the Saronikos Gulf is near is the the Gulf in the Gulf of Athens. I'm 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 diving at these two places near Athens. Yep. In the summer, I'm going to Kithra and Santorini. Santorini, ah, okay. you all know Santorini is near to Syros. These uh, these islands are very deep. I usually okay. go to 30 meters now. I when I was younger, I, I was going to 40, but 40 meters is is a skyscraper. <laughs> it's a very challenging dive. We uh, in Australia, we s- seldom see guys diving um, those depths. Although occasionally there are guys that do, but uh, it's it's a different type of of spearfishing. That's for sure. Yeah, you really got to prepare yourself when you're under those depths. I know when I'm at those depths, it takes a good solid breathe up and uh, you know yes. a bit of bit of mental preparation. Shrek, how often do you get to those depths? <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, if someone chucks me an extra weight belt, I get to those steps all the time. I, I don't come back up, though. Uh, so, Vasily, what was getting started spearfishing like for you? Um, I, I read you were a little a professional basketball player. Yes, yes. I played basketball till my 23 years of age, 25, before the Army. And wow. uh, I had a, a body shape and, uh, you know, from my my basketball history, so I had uh, I had a, a vault to do some things more easily. So are you are you quite tall? Not too tall. One one eighty eight. So what, what position did you play in basketball? Play playmaker. Ah okay. Yeah. So what what transferred from basketball to spearfishing? So you said some of the the athletic the fitness. What did anything else transfer from basketball to spearfishing? Yeah, in basketball, you have uh, reflexes, you have uh, strong legs, and you have uh, the 
the, the capability physically to, we call it in Greek, uh, aerobiaskis. It's a, uh, you don't get tired easily. Yeah. Okay. You are, we, I think we would call it fitness. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I do understand what you mean. All right. So, so how old were you when you started um, spearfishing? I, I, I was spearfishing from uh, 15 years of age, 13 years of age, but when I went to the army at the island of Kos, I stopped basketball because I had some arguments with with the contracts and all that, and I I gave myself all to spear fishing. I gave myself to spear fishing in the age of 25, almost uh, every one or two days as an uh, okay. exercise and as a sport. Okay, so you you started to focus on your spear fishing. How, when, when you decided to focus on your spear fishing, what sort of improvements did you see um, in your spear fishing by being like completely devoted to it? And, and sort of did at that point in your life, did you start pushing greater depth? Uh, I didn't uh, gain the depth very easily. I started, uh, I, I could uh, dive in 10 meters from my first years of uh, spear fishing as a child, but. I, I was afraid the depths in the first years. So yeah. I didn't uh, raise the depths. I raised the time because I was yep. doing you know, the first years I was doing aspetto, you know. So uh, till the time I raised the depth, I had uh, too much time underwater in small, small uh, depths. I had raised my, my diving time to three minutes. Oh, nice. Wow. Yes, it was too big, but I didn't know that because I usually <laughs> I was usually I was diving alone with some friends. We didn't know him much. Yeah, that's a long. That is a long aspetto, uh, even if you're in the shallow water. So, so you said uh, you, you you're pulling these three minute bottom times in ten meters by yourself. So no no partner diver, just uh, out by yourself. Yes, but I, I have uh, read a lot of uh, books at that time. We have in Greece, Yanis de Torakis. And for the physiology of diving, I, I knew a lot of things about dive times, about uh, uh, surface times, about all these things that kept you uh, secure. Did you, did you adapt and uh, change your diving practices when you realized you were perhaps pushing? The boundaries? When I started pushing the boundaries, I had a, a, a fellow mate uh, spear fishing with me, and I had the safety required. But uh, I, I, I was afraid of, of depths. Uh, that was the main issue. Sometimes when I went to Keith it up because it, it was needed, I started uh, with uh, some other friends to, to push me a little further, but it because I had the time, it was easier. Oh, hang on. Um, hang on, Vasily. I think your phone's going off in the background. Yes, I'm giving it away. So. That's <laughs> 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 all right. <laughs> okay, that's, a, that's good anyway, Vasily. So what, what fish did you start, did you target when you were starting out? Uh, most people in the uh, Mediterranean Sea shoot uh, kefalos, we say in Greek. Uh, mugil, I don't know the word. In, the, in Latin, it's mugil kephalus, small fish. And uh, afterwards, they, they go to some brims and some groupers. That, that's all in 10 meters because um, when we sort of watch all these video clips of guys spearfishing in the Mediterranean, it all seems to be at minimum 20 meters and then, you know, up to, to 30, 40 meters. But you're still shooting good fish in that 10 meter mark? No, that was in the beginning. That uh, that ten meter was in 1995. Okay. When I was 25. <laughs> now, oh, okay. after uh, some years that I gained some meters in depth, and I was more, uh, I had a company in spear fishing, and I was not alone. I started to to dive deeper, 20, 25, 30 meters, and I was uh, getting more fish. And bigger fish. Okay. With uh, when you started to push your depth or go deeper, was it the you said you were sort of scared of those depths? Was that the, was it the pressure, like the physical feeling of the depth? 
not the pressure. The, the pressure, uh, the only time I felt the pressure, it, it was one time in the 40 meters when I felt my lungs. I felt the sound. And uh, afterwards, I didn't go again at 40 meters. I went uh, maximum 35. But uh, if you gain the confidence of the time, uh, afterwards, the, dip, uh, the depth for me was when I looked up from the bottom. When you look up, up from 40 meters, believe me, it's too far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I still remember that. And I remember that I pushed with my, my one fin with my leg, the bottom, to gain yep. one or two meters to start, uh, the, to start getting up. But it's okay. These all feelings were in the first years of my diving. Afterwards, you are more relaxed. So moving up to current times, um, you've been diving for 30 years. Um, you, you've learned a lot about your body and diving at depth and what, what, what is comfortable for you. What is your current greatest challenge to becoming a better Spiro? Yes, that's... Uh... In our times and in Greece, uh, we have, uh, as you know, in Europe, uh, a lot of problems financially, politically, and general. And we're all in stress, stress with our jobs, stress with the future. So the most, uh, the greatest challenge for me is when I get in the water to, uh, to have calmness and relaxation. Uh, I can you can achieve that over the years, and that's the issue for me. When to you, when you get in the water to forget everything, to be calm, and fish, uh, no matter the quantity or the kilos, fish some fish and relax and uh, do that thing, and enjoy yourself. Yeah, I can relate to that. I I go. I want to have a good time. Um, sometimes it doesn't even matter if you shoot some fish, but um. They're good when they come, but uh, yeah, I know what you mean. You go spearfishing to relax and yes. get calm, get away from life. Sometimes one fish is uh, enough. I think Shrek has got, a, has got a great attitude there that he doesn't care if he shoots a fish because he often doesn't shoot fish. In <laughs> fact, for city, I'd say he rarely shoots a fish. So mm. it's just good that he has that attitude so he can sort of stay happy when everybody else is shooting fish. If you know what I mean, yeah, yeah so. Vasily can relate because um, sometimes when you when you don't have a very good dive buddy, Vasily, and uh, you know you should only dive at the depths your dive buddy is comfortable at. So sometimes when I <laughs> when I dive with Turbo, it's very restrictive. I can only dive to maximum <laughs> seven, eight meters, maybe. Yeah. But I'm pulling five minutes of bottom time, so really good espado. So anyway, <laughs> so moving on. So Vasily, I saw a great photo of you holding up. Uh, a, a huge amberjack, mate. Why don't you tell us uh, how big that fish was? Um, and I, I assume it's your most memorable fish. Yes. And uh, and, and tell us how you uh, you came across that fish. Okay, you want a complete story, uh, I believe. Absolutely. That amberjack was 40 kilos. Oh, wow. Nice. And till that time, the biggest fish I had was a mortal grouper, five kilos. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, There's a bit of difference. So uh, the story behind that is that uh, uh, in my summer house, there was a big hotel which has a, a dock where uh, there was a large uh, wooden sailing boat which took tourists to the Canal of Corinth. That uh, sailing boat had a large plastic buoy uh, with a thick rope and a chain at the end uh, with an anchor. So this anchorage was uh, usually free from the ship and was 50 meters from the shore in open waters. Uh, the buoy and the thick rope was operating as an FAD. I don't know if you know the term. Yeah, fish aggregation device, yep. Yes, it's a, a, a device which usually fishermen do, uh, fishing ships do in the ocean. Okay. So over there... There were small fish, bigger fish, and uh, after that, uh, usually there were uh, schools of amberjacks up to eight kilos, which came uh, from time to time, and I took some fish with aspeto uh, at uh, half depth. So one day, as I was at mid-depth waiting for uh, waiting, 
with low visibility. I saw from above uh, the white lips and uh, the thought so tail of uh, 80 or 90 centimeter fish as I was used to for use lumberjacks. I let myself fall with a negative buoyancy and, uh, and as I was falling, the shape of a much bigger amberjack started to take shape. It was still and it was facing the other way than me. So as I dropped at 25 meters and behind it to its depth, it uh, must have, uh, I must uh, have had about uh, 150 pulses. The fish understood <laughs> that, me. You're talking about your heart, right? Yes, my heart beat. It was, yeah, well. it was a bit so hard that I, I thought that it would go out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the fish yeah. understood me from that, made a gorgeous U-turn in bubbles. <laughs> I had never seen bubbles from a fish again inside the yeah. water. So look, it looked at me from three meters. I sit my pants, <laughs> never thinking to shoot. <laughs> The fish yeah. was bigger than me in the water. I was, I'm 188 centimeters. Yeah. And well, as you see at the end, it was bigger. So uh, we stayed for some seconds looking at each other and uh, it turned uh, slowly living in victory. <laughs> <laughs> the, strange, yeah. the strange thing was as uh, the fish turned, because it turned quickly, yeah. that I yeah. saw uh, something on its skin. I didn't know at that time what it was. We'll tell about that in the end. Okay. So after the days passed, everything in my eyes was not the same in the sea. I saw everywhere bigger things. <laughs> the fish okay. that, uh, was a uh, half meter. I saw them two meters. <laughs> yes, it, the, the fish, the, the sea was uh, never the same again. So oh, after wow. one month, uh, as I did the same things again, I came to the sea with my spear fishing equipment. I went to that boy again, uh, prepared. I had a normal master 1916 at that time, was the first gun with, which was not uh, in a circular cross-section. It was shaped like a, a boat, the cross-section okay. of the gun. I don't know if you know that. And uh, as I was approaching the boy, I saw the, the big amberjack standing still in seven meters of depth. It was calm. So I approached it from behind and left, and at two meters, the fish slightly bent its body, moving a length of its body. I made the shot falling with a gun, the movement of the fish, and I hit it, but not good. It took 10 or 15 meters of line, and then as I pulled, with the first pulling of the shaft, went off. It must have oh. been only one or two centimeters in the flesh of the fish. Oh, uh, wow. Yes, it was totally disappointing, but uh, the fish, big fish, I knew that because I had seen one more time big amberjack in Coast Island. They were moving. If a fish is very big, it seems to your eyes that it's moving very slowly, but it, it covers a big distance. Mm, okay. So when I was in two meters and attempted to the shot, the fish uh, moved in four meters in a second. So the the the, the shaft didn't get in. So after that uh, meeting, I said to myself that the fish would never come again. But uh, after one or two months, as I went to the sea, uh, to the beach, uh, again for spear fishing, uh, I saw something I'd never seen before. There were some seagulls over the buoy. I okay. didn't know that at that time what that meant, but of course it means that something is under the, them. Uh, so I went to the water thinking of that, going to the buoy, and when I, I arrived at the buoy, I saw what 10 meters depth, uh, a ball of damselfish, we, uh, it's small black fish, uh, chromis chromis is in Latin. There were, okay. They have said a ball, which uh, in fisherman means defense. So I said to myself that the amberjack is at the bottom and it's hunting. Oh, okay, so it was like a that the the fish, the small fish, they were, oh, yeah, they were balled up. Yeah, okay, oh, I understand. Yeah, yep. The small fish, if they are in danger 
form a ball to, yep. to see bigger, to seem bigger. Yeah. So okay. I, I, I tried to calm down and I began to dive. Yeah. Okay. And as I was descending, I saw the figure of the big fish slowly moving to uh, to pass below me. It was about 10 meters above. I was about 10 meters above it. And yep. uh, the fish had not felt him, felt me. Uh, okay. I was more calm that time because I've seen it before. So okay. I was approaching and uh, 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 the time had stopped there for eternity. I said to myself, <laughs> if I want uh, the shaft to pass through the fish, I have to touch it and then to shoot. So I said a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and uh, then half a meter above it, the fish understood me, turned <laughs> his head up to look at me, and I shoot it behind, shoot it behind the eye. So wow, uh, the shaft went through all the fish. I still remember uh, the rope hanging from the other side with the shaft, and. Okay. Uh, the fish uh, was shocked, did nothing. Uh, for one second, I thought that I didn't shoot it. <laughs> and uh, then uh, it turned, headed uh, for the deep waters, and instantly the shaft uh, went to the barb on it. And uh, I said to myself, quickly to the surface. I had the drum with 50 meters of uh, reel, yeah. so I had to get up as fast as I could. I went to the surface. And uh, I was 10 meters before the large boy uh, towards the shore. I, okay. ter yep. I, I turned my head, head to see the closed drum of the reel, and it was empty, and so I said to me that now it's going to crack me. So I started uh, surfer skiing. <laughs> I was making waves. I first <laughs> I hadn't made skin with uh, <laughs> real skis before. <laughs> That's the first time I knew that. <laughs> so I was lucky because uh, the root of the fish took me on the buoy. I grabbed the rope of the buoy. And with the other hand, I had the gun. At that moment, I had to decide to hold it or let it go. The fish was heading to the open waters of uh, shore. Next stop was uh, an island called Egina. It was okay. at 10 miles. <laughs> I didn't have a, another gun, and I couldn't go to my boy, to my species fishing boy. So okay. the decision was to hold it as, lo yeah. as long as I could. The thought because uh, behind that was that uh, the shot was from head to the belly where there were vital organs, and uh, that thing would soon uh, get the fish tired. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Uh, for another 15, 15 minutes or more, I could not <laughs> hold the position. The, the fish yeah. was very strong. Uh, was making circles, ups and downs, and sometime, fortunately, it was stuck, uh, it uns was unstuck, and I managed to, to get my hands, uh, to close my hands and to go one two or two meters to my boy to clip the gun and have two hands on the, on the line. Ah, okay, yep. So, uh, at that uh, point, I felt that the fish was beginning to to get tired. Uh, so, I started to pull some line. In some minutes afterwards, there were 30, 20, 30 meters of line on the surface. A boat was passing, was trying to pass through me and the, uh, the big boy I was sighting. Oh go away because it would take me to care. <laughs> so finally, the fish lost his power. The line was dropped to the seabed, and I started to pulling a very heavy container. That was the feeling. <laughs> I had about 20 meters, 15 meters more, uh, and some, some minutes afterwards, uh, I saw it for the first time in several meters of depth. Uh, the fish was slightly moving, and I took it to the shallows. I, I didn't throw it uh, to get down to hug it. I was very afraid. It was very big, so I took it to the shallow waters, one meter of depth, where uh, I saw a large cut, uh, 30 centimeters wide. I saw two broken bones, 
which were thick like my finger, I still remember uh-huh. that. The barb was holding in one bone. Oh. Uh, I climbed it over the fish, pushed the, the shaft to pass through it, climbed it like a horse to <laughs> hold it, yes, from one or to the other side, left and right, and with my hands and legs, pushed it out to the beach. The funny wow. thing at the beach was that uh, a lot of people were there. It was uh, nine o'clock in the morning, and uh, mostly middle and uh, old people were there. <laughs> they all got up the fish to look it through to the head, and the fish at uh, its uh, last breath opened its cheeks with a noisy movement, and all scared people uh, moved back. <laughs> and uh, that was very sad for me because I, it was a real giant. It was a glorious yes. breath. It was the last breath. You know, it's like a man is dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 40, 40 kg fish, it's huge. Yes, the story behind, behind that is that uh, the strange mark, which was at the side of the fish, a small mark, it was about uh, 20 meters of diameter, was a bite. Ah, okay. Yes, it was probably from a shark, a small shark. The fish ah, okay. going there and had the, and came back all these times, three times, to scratch his uh, bite on the chain and the rope of the boy. Ah, wow. That was, that was the, the uh, explanation because I didn't uh, understand it in the beginning. It had a small uh, mark. It was uh, almost healed, but I'm sure that he was going there for that reason, to scratch his, uh, its, uh, its bite. You had three goes at that fish, and then you eventually shot it and had a huge battle getting it. And yes, uh, folks. it's a very I, good story. I could not imagine that uh, there is so much strength in a, in a fish. It's it's uh, it's too too much. Like a train. It's like a train. It, it, it looks like a train. I've seen the photo as well. Uh, I'll link that photo up in the show notes because it's a. It's when when you take a fish like that, it's ve- it is very memorable. So, no, awesome story, Vasily. G'day, guys. If you're new to spear fishing, I highly recommend listening to our episode "Free Diving for Spear Fishing" with Pete Ryder. Pete uh, is an entrepreneur and an excellent freedive instructor, and he has come up with two great courses, the 10-meter freedive and the 5-minute freediver. I've used the 5-minute freediver to increase my bottom time, found it incredibly useful for my trip to the Coral Sea, and I cannot recommend it highly enough. His other course, the 10-meter freediver, is a great resource for those just starting out that literally want to get to 10 meters, and this course will help you learn proper breathing technique and some of the safety aspects associated with freediving. Use the code NoobSpiro to save 20% on all of Pete's courses. He's put together this deal just for listeners of the show. That's at howtofreedive.com. Use the code NoobSpiro. Moving on, uh, what is your favourite hunting technique and how do you apply it successfully? Okay, uh, my favourite technique is uh, a combination of... Uh, Free falling, aguato, and aspetto. Uh, this is uh, through canyons, which usually end to vertical cliffs, which are typical in Greek islands. Uh, where after these cliffs, fish, fish are calm and uh, usually do not notice your presence because your, uh, your movements are in silence and are in, inside the uh, rocks. Okay, yep. So, uh, the plan is to choose a certain route inside the rocks, in the falling slopes, stop at the cliff for a small aspetto to see what is going on around, and uh, after, it depends. Uh, instant shot if you see a fish after, uh, after the cliff, or a free fall to, to a fish who is looking at you, or sets at a hole. Uh, this, of course, is demanding in terms of uh, time and depth. It needs much training, and you can achieve it after many years. But if you conquer that, uh, uh, if you can conquer calmness in moving with aguato, it's a wonderful trip to nature, 
And uh, it doesn't matter if you catch a fish. The beauty is in the images you see where fish are not disturbed with your presence. They are calm in the environment. And uh, uh, it's like you are not even there. Yeah. I like that. There's a few practical takeaways there. Like you're using structure to um, hide your body language and perhaps your um, electrical signal underwater. And yes, and then yes. you're, you're relaxing on the bottom and you're responding to the situation when you're there. You know, like you, you sort of said you can, you can ambush or you can have a look in a hole. Or, yes, you have to adapt. Yeah, awesome. All right, so Aguado and Espeto sort of combined. All right, awesome. Yeah, very cool technique. Yes, there, oh, is a, right. there is a guy in Cyprus. It's Anvar Musavalov. Anvar does it to forty meters. He's the pre, he's the president of the technique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we 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 talk to Anvar quite often. Uh, his YouTube channel, Deep Spearfishing Encyclopedia, is uh, very yes, good. Yes, yes, he he he's he's the future now. He's young. He's powerful. There are some guys, yes, there are some guys which are very powerful. Yeah, I know how they feel. <laughs> now, <coughs> Vasily, moving on, mate, you've been diving quite a while. You must have had a few near misses during your time. Can you share with us uh, your scariest moment uh, whilst out spearfishing? Yes, I, I don't have a scariest moment exactly. They are sort of uh, potentially dangerous, but finally, funny incidents. The first one, was at uh, my summer house near Corinth, where uh, when I was young and we didn't have any money, I had only one suit with five millimeters. I had put on my long john, not the upper, uh, which was uh, because of the heat. So uh, as I was doing an aspect at shallow waters, I hit a small amberjack. And uh, after the shot, it was circling. The, it was circling the, below me, so I went down as we usually do to hug it and go to the surface. When I went down and I was at my knees at the sea floor, at the beginning of the ascent, it slipped through my hug, and its dorsal fin pierced my ar- armpit. <laughs> yes, and, uh, at, the, at the beginning uh, of the shaft, at the end of the shaft. The shaft was stuck between my weights. So the shaft made the radius with the amberjack, which guided the shaft. And uh, the fish pierced with the shaft my leg, which was uh, as I was in my knees at the bottom of the shaft. It didn't <laughs> went uh, far, one centimeter, the suit and a scratch on my leg. But uh, yeah. the shaft uh, was. Uh, stuck on my leg. <laughs> so I was at five meters laughing and say, it's not uh, impossible. It's not possible. Uh, the fish speared me in return. <laughs> <laughs> that was so th- funny. And uh, the other one was more scary because there was uh, an island near my summer house which is called Ovrios. And in the back of its side, there was a, a blind cave where we usually went in with a small boat. Uh, the ceiling is about four meters, and the depth where is about uh, eight meters. There is only underwater exit. Uh, it's a dome of seven, eight meters of diameter. Diameter. There, at the bottom of the cave, facing the excellent small gulf, I was uh, doing a speto. I heard a small boat, okay. which I had seen before, which was uh, uh, dragging a line with a hook behind it around the island. So I didn't worry because I was under the dome of the cave, but suddenly something took my gun from my hand. I didn't see what As the boat, <laughs> the, the explanation was that as the boat made the circumreference of the gulf outside the cave, the metal fish with the multi-hook was on the line, got under the cave doing the radius and pierced the double bands on my gun. <laughs> Taking my gun away. So my ears were lucky (laughs) because uh, after the first shock, I followed the gun to the surface, shouting to the guys, hey, it's not the fish, it's my gun. And uh, you can imagine if the hook uh, was uh, on my head, what a heavy fish (laughs) the fisherman would uh, thought I would be. (laughs) 
<laughs> yes, if you tell it so, to someone, it, he might say that it's a lie, but it's a true. It's a true. For some years, I kept uh, I kept the bands with a hole. <laughs> Hey guys, today's Veterans Vault is brought to you by our ebook, 99 Tips to Get Better at Spearfishing. It's actionable information from more than 40 interviews with spearfishing experts from around the world. Turbo, what do you like about the book, buddy? Mate, I love it that it's called 99 Tips to Get Better at Spearfishing, but there's well over 99 tips in there. Some estimated at around 1,000 or 1,500 tips. <laughs> <laughs> I love your estimation. I like the fact that it's just actionable information to, to improve your spearfishing out of sight on the next dive. Yep, absolutely. It's the best value for money spearfishing book on the market. So get on Amazon.com and pick yourself up a copy. 99 tips to get better at spearfishing. Thanks, guys. Awesome. All right. So moving on, uh, Veterans Vault is the next section of the show. It's where we ask our featured guests to take us sort of deep into an area of spearfishing expertise or perhaps an area that they're passionate about. So today we were going to talk with you about learning about your environment so that you can be part of your environment rather than and rather than taking away from it, you could understand it and make sure that you weren't taking too much, I guess. And uh, so being part of the ecosystem. Yes. Where, where, does your, where does your passion come from for this subject, Vasily? Uh, listen, I'm at the sea in another, on another way for the last 35 years. The thing I've learned through the years is that uh, if you want to take from the sea, is that you have to let her take you, take you in uh, parentheses. When it comes to spirit fishing, you have to be a part of uh, the sea. You have to be part of the places you usually, usually dive part of the underworld, the underwater world, part of the ecosystem of the biocycle. You have to learn fish habits, their roots, their holes, and uh, you have to do it uh, with respect. So I have to borrow uh, two words from Bruce Lee. He said, uh, be water. This has a similar meaning for me. You have to reform, to be one with water, not disturb the with your presence there in the wonder world, and uh, then the sea will embrace you. So, uh, of course, this comes with uh, sustainability. We have to retain the reserves of the fishes in the areas we fish, so that uh, we and our children and the next generations will have something to fish. We have to be selective. So, uh, here in the Mediterranean Sea, uh, the effects of overfishing are severe, in the last decade. Of course, the spear fishing community has a small participation in that, but we are also responsible. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you an example. In, okay. When it comes to a fishing area where uh, there is always a king, in Mediterranean seas, uh, sea, usually it's a big grouper. If you shot that fish and take it, that uh, kingdom is gone. Big groupers usually attract other fish in the area. Smaller groupers, sargo, corb, uh, dentex, paracuda. So you have to okay. be careful what you shoot and, uh, in, and uh, in what quantities. You cannot uh, kill all the, all the herd. In, Gre in Greek islands, there are usually uh, white sea brims under uh, uh, slabs. And uh, you can take 20 or 30 fishes if you find it. But afterwards, yeah. there will be no hole, no fishes. So we have to be selective. And uh, we have to make the difference for us and for the generations, generations to come. Mm. So, Vasily, like, I think this is a consistent theme we have on the podcast is um, we get guys that are experienced and they've been spearfishing for a long time. And they gradually become more aware of the role we have to play in the sea, and they get more sustainable or sustainably minded as they get more experience. Is that yes. what your experience has been? Did you did you did you develop that sort of sense of awareness? Yes, 
But uh, over the years, the thing is uh, crucial because in uh, our days, when we were younger, in 25, 30, 35 years of age, we, we would see fish in 20 meters, 25, 15, 10. Now, younger guys who are going to, to uh, act, uh, to go for fish fishing, do not see any fish. And they, and they go deeper, and that is dangerous. And of course, uh, we have to sustain the fishes and uh, our younger uh, boys to, to, to see something. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, thinking about the next generation to come is, is, a, is a good way to look at it. Right, uh, Vasily. Now it's time to uh, for the 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 part of the show called uh, the dive bag. So this is where we have a look at uh, what's in your dive bag and what you're using. That was probably the worst introduction to this segment. It is pretty early. It's still only five thirty. But just I'm still waking up. So, okay. <laughs> all right, hey, Vasily. You've you've given us a great list there of what you've got in your dive bag, mate. Uh, what what's your number one piece of equipment on your dive bag list? The most important thing now is uh, my aqua scooter, because uh, okay. a lot of years in a lot of uh, islands I was going uh, with my legs, no boat. Wow. Sometimes boat, <laughs> but uh, more of the times with my legs. So aqua scooter now, which is attached uh, with two clips to my boy. My boy is something like a small rib. It's, it's called Domer Clipper. There are other companies which have the same. You can be half with half your body on it and your legs are in the water only. Okay. So in front of it, I have a touch aqua scooter and I can uh, go long distances, especially in Santorini and <laughs> Kifira. It's like a, a, a little boat for one man. Yes, a little boat. <laughs> if you want, I can send you a picture also. Yeah, yeah that would definitely. be excellent. Ah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, on, it's in one of my, on my videos. So uh, the other things on my bag is... Uh, I'm, I'm fond of uh, camo equipment generally uh, because of Aspeto. It's not so important, but it breaks the shapes. So yep. uh, I have okay. uh, my gloves, my socks, a belt with weights, my carbon blades. And you you use a lot of OMA equipment. Does that Do you use um, OMA uh, fins? Yes. All my equipment is Omer, not uh, because Omer. Uh, I, I begin, I began with Omer when I was young, and I was, uh, I stuck there because I also have. Uh, it's uh, the, the 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 owner of the shop. It's from yep. my island. It's ah okay. She's a part cousin of mine. So also have two guns, yeah. one long and one uh, very good uh, yeah. short. It depends from the fishing. A okay. small flashlight. I don't usually use it because I prefer to shoot in open waters for yeah. for my video. I take videos also. Yeah, yeah. I was going to get there. Um, so you're, you came on our radar, Vasily, with a couple of videos. Um, you, you've entered, had some entries, successful entries in a big video competition um, over there, mostly in the Mediterranean. What's the competition called? And how can some of our listeners sort of see what it's all about? Yes, the competition is held in Italy uh, in a YouTube channel called uh, Il Pescatore in Apnea. Okay. Uh, they have made two spearfishing video contests. One, it was two years before, and the, the other one was this year. In the first two, in the, there were about uh, 80 or 90 participants from 25 countries all over the world. Wow. Yes, a lot of people. And you, and, uh, you, you won the first I one, I won you? the first one, uh, not because of the fees, if someone sees the videos, be, because of my editing. You can understand if you yeah. see the video. Okay. The second one uh, was more popular, okay. more uh, well-known spearfishers from around the world came also the world champion some very good italians and a lot of people from uh, youtube which are well known for their videos 
in which I was uh, second. And the first was uh, the current uh, uh, world champion in the second yeah. place, uh, Yanis Sideris, and I'm honored by that because I, yeah, yeah. I think that Yanis is, yeah. is a, a dream spirit for me. Yeah, he he won the world champs this year in Greece, Yanni Sideris. So, and you you said you've you've spoken with him a few times. He's just a very nice guy. Yes, he's a humble guy, and he's an example for all of us. He's over forty years of age, and he has <laughs> been also uh, in two thousand and eight in second place in the world championship. And we have another guy in Greece, Manolis Yankos, who is also. Very well known. He was in the Euro African Cup champion last year. Yeah. It sounds like uh, he's a good guy. Sedaris was a good guy to come second to in the video competition. It, it goes well with your veterans' fault. So we'll, we'll I'll link those videos up in the um, show notes so people can come and have a look at them. Anyway, we're silly. Awesome. Um, moving on. Fast five facts for noobs. These are five actionable bits of information that you would love to have had if you were starting out spearfishing all over again. So far away, your fast five facts for noobs. Yes. The first one is, uh, as we said before, you have to have knowledge. Knowledge uh, comes with the attendance of a free diving and spearfishing school. Safety is awesome. first. The second thing is that you have a, uh, to have a good physical and mental condition. If you're feeling well and you are uh, fit, you, have, you can dive. Otherwise, don't go. Uh, the third thing is that uh, you have uh, to have adequate knowledge of equipment because a lot of times, even if uh, all the things are set to super quality, something spoils your fishing. So uh, the, for the fourth thing is that you have to be patient. You can achieve everything, but it comes with time. And uh, the last is that you have uh, the most important thing that you have to respect the sea and its habitants. And that's consistent with your with your veterans' fault and yes. what we talked about yeah. with that. That's awesome. G'day, guys. Today's Fast Five Facts for Noobs is brought to you by our new book, 99 Tips to Get Better at Spearfishing. If you've enjoyed today's Fast Five Facts for Noobs, chances are you're going to enjoy 99 Tips to Get Better at Spearfishing. Turbo, where can our listeners find that? Shrek, they can find that book at Amazon.com. It's cheap as chips and it's great value for money because there are more than 99 tips in that book. Yeah. How many more? Nobody knows. It's an infinite number. Just many more. There's uh, <laughs> that's actionable information from over 40 interviews with spearfishing experts from around the world. If you have enjoyed today's Fast Five Facts for Noobs, you're going to enjoy 99 Tips to Get Better at Spearfishing, available on Amazon.com. All right, cool. So we've talked a little bit about your YouTube channel. Where, where can people find that, uh, Vasily? You can Google me on the YouTube and find with my name uh, or in Facebook the videos that I edit. Awesome. And uh, and people can also look up the uh, competition, which is Il Piscator and Apnea. Is that right? Yes. There are the, my two videos, which uh, are mentioned with the title, which have the first or second place. I also have a, a compilation with the uh, best 10 spearfishing shots per species which is my, my videos. And I also have some compilation of, uh, with the courtesy of other spearfishing, which are mentioned on, on the video, spearfishermen, for uh, some awesome fish, uh, record fish of the Mediterranean. All right, well, I'll link up um, your channel in the show notes. So there'll be a page on noobsbureau.com, uh, Vasily Koronios. Come and check him out. Have a look at his YouTube channel. That's awesome. Uh, any parting piece of guidance for our audience, Vasily? The only thing I can think now is that uh, keep diving. <laughs> and maybe enjoy it? Yes. <laughs> it was nice. Ah, awesome. You are great guys and uh, great uh, courage to do that in the middle of the night. <laughs> you have to laugh. We really appreciate you joining us, uh, Vasily. It's awesome to to have someone um, that's you know um, entered videos and done so well um, like yourself. So thanks for joining okay, us today. Thank you too. It's an honor for me. 
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed today's interview with Vasily from over there in Greece. It was great to get him on the show. Despite uh, the language barrier, I think he did a, a bang up job. So big ups to him for joining us. It's a real pleasure to have him on the show and get, get a Greek perspective on spearfishing in the Noob Sparrow podcast. So awesome. Look, in two weeks, we are off to do a 101. We're either going to do how to deal with seasickness or how to do, deal with sharks. We haven't quite decided yet. We've got to get some more things locked away to decide what we're going to do. One of the guys wrote in and said, look, I had a real bad near miss with uh, a shark recently, or a, a, a few sharks. And uh, he said, you've got a 101 with crocs. I'd really love to hear you guys do a 101 dealing with sharks. So that's what Turbo's doing. He's hot on the case. He is at it. Uh, so we're getting some experts on and some, some shark attack victims. We're going to string together a magic 101 and get some tips and learn some stuff about how to deal well with sharks. So I'm looking forward to that. And the seasickness one is also phenomenal. We uh, were contacted a while ago by the BBC to give our opinion for an article they are writing because Turbo's wrote a quite a big, uh, substantial um, blog post about how to deal with seasickness. So that episode will be based on that. So, yep, look forward to joining you guys in two weeks. Tune in and subscribe to the New Sparrow Podcast. Leave us a review. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks for listening to today's episode. It's been a cracker. We always love bringing these to you. But Shrek, you got a couple of things on your mind. Shalom, Turbo. Yep, I would love it if people would head over to noobspirit.com and sign on to the Floater, the Floater email newsletter. It's our monthly release that gives you details. Oh, monthly release, the Floater. <laughs> <laughs> it gives uh, a bit of a quick update on what's happening on the blog and are in Noob Sparrow's world. And you also get a couple of bonuses when you sign up. You get the dive day checklist and 10 tips to become a better Sparrow. you got to get that dive day checklist. It's got a photoshopped image of Shrek on it. <laughs> we've, we've pulled in his guts a bit, made him, and he's put out his shoulders a bit. We actually paid for that. Mine's hanging over my bed head. I look at it every morning when I get up. You've got to get yourself a copy of it. That's uh, the only way I start my day. Now, today's show was proudly brought to you in partnership with spearfishing.com.au. Adreno have also put together a code for listeners of the Noob Spiro podcast where they can save $20 on all purchases over $200. That's right. Punch in the code Noob Spiro when you buy your next spear gun or wetsuit at spearfishing.com.au and save yourself 20 bucks. It's a no-brainer. Shop with our sponsors, Adreno at spearfishing.com.au and support the Noob Spiro podcast. Thanks for listening and putting up with us today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you in another fortnight. See ya. See ya.